really fun to say that in a in, in a like fun to say that line. Impossible not to have fun saying that. Like you don't get those lines a lot. Um, I, I probably won't say it, but you know the line I'm talking about. Um, hi, I'm Fabian Frankel, and this is Freeze Frame for British Esquire, and I'm going to be talking through some of the scenes from House of the Dragon. Well done, my prince. You win in Tony's in no time. So that's not Matt. Matt did not do that, but what's amazing is I guess that they face replaced Matt's face onto this bit where he sort of like is falling on the railing. But that was this stuntman called Gago who's like, the, he's a crazy man. Kristen Cole has two sets of armor in the show. One of them is this one, which is like his armor before he becomes a knight of the King's Guard, and then the other one is his King's Guard armor. Weirdly, this armor was quite a lot lighter than the King's Guard armor. It didn't have a cloak, and I sort of felt like I was Heath Ledger in a knight's tale when I wore this armor because Heath Ledger sort of has this armor that is like of no of like no house. It's like kind of got like a poor like a poor fighter's armor. And I sort of felt like I was Heath Ledger. Not in my acting, just in that costume. Um, and I was in a joust. So yeah. I, okay, I always felt like um, I basically always felt that when I that this thing looked a little bit like I had ketchup because uh, someone in the cast was like, ah, oh, did you spill, like, we had hot dogs, hot dogs that day, and I felt like I had spilled, like, I had ketchup on my mouth, I was really embarrassed. That's no slate on the makeup artist. I, I didn't think that initially, but someone genuinely was like, wow, dude, you, you need to get that away, because they had hot dogs. I hadn't uh, spilled ketchup. Gods, he's Dornish. I was hoping to ask for the princess's favour. Okay, so basically, Millie had to throw the wreath, which was like very lightweight, and I had to catch it in a kind of heroic, kind of Kristen Coley way. And every time the wreath would be thrown, there was like a wind that would take the wreath away from me, and my armor was very stiff, so I couldn't like adjust to the wind. And so it took me like maybe five goes to catch it, and there's so much that the crowd, all the supporting artists in the crowd would like boo and cheer, or they'd be like, come on man, get it this time. So I was getting real stressed out, and then by the time you can see in my face, I smile afterwards, which people think is like a kind of character choice, it's not. I just was so relieved that I'd caught this wreath. Tell me something, Miss Kristen. Do you think the Ram will ever accept me as their queen? I have no choice but to, Princess. Okay, so this is the scene where Rhaenyra and Kristen are, have been on, have left the hunt and have essentially sort of gone away from everyone. I think Rhaenyra wants to be away from her family because she's finding it incredibly difficult to be around them and isn't feeling sort of that she's getting any respect uh, or being heard by her father and by sort of his, his confidants. And so she runs away on a horse and Kristen chases her. And this is sort of later on in that day. Sorry, it already makes me laugh. Basically, 
I'm a bit I'm excited to talk about this one because this was just one of those days on set that I can't explain to you how strange it was. The animal that you're about to see, I guess it's a boar, was a man dressed in a green suit, skin tight, covered face, green suit, who we had never met. And at the very first rehearsal of this scene, the man was already in the bushes Millie and I didn't know that he was in the bushes and they were like, we're running through the scene, we did the beginning part of the scene and this man kept in the kind of movement of a boar, screaming like a boar, came out and attacked Millie. And when I say like, I've never been so shocked in my entire, and not in an intent, like I don't want to say he attacked her in like a kind of mean way, like he just sort of like, did the bit of the scene, but me and Millie were like, oh my God, <laughs> no one warned us that this man was gonna be in this bush. We didn't know his, someone hadn't told us his name. Someone kept referring to him as like man in the green, okay, the green man suit guy kind of come over here and stuff. Anyway, it was just a very like strange situation. It took a beat not to laugh when we did this scene. So that's so that is not a ball. That is a man in a green suit running like a ball. That's strange. She expects everyone in the red keep to deny the truth, our eyes can all plainly see. And the king, her father. He knows. Of course he knows. Or did once, but just convinced himself otherwise. He'll do naught but make excuses for her. The princess Rhaenyra is brazen and relentless. A spider who stings and sucks her prey dry. Spoil. Really fun to say that in a, in a, like, fun to say that line. Impossible not to have fun saying that line. You don't get those lines a lot. Um, I, I probably won't say it. You know the line I'm talking about. That was beneath me, Your Grace, and I apologize. I have to believe that in the end, honor and decency will prevail. We need to hew to that and to each other. Liv Cook, she's like an amazing actor. She's always really good. I remember the first ever day of filming we ever had we shot in this place called St. Michael's Mount in Cornwall. I was so nervous because it was like everyone, it was all the cast together for that funeral scene in episode seven for The Wake. Everyone seemed to just be doing like amazing acting. And then I did what I can only describe as one of the worst pieces of acting of all time. I just couldn't, I was, I, it's like I'd forgotten how you do it. And I remember feeling really embarrassed that I had done this terrible piece of acting Miguel had asked me to like do a thing where you sort of like roll your eyes, like you know, getting told off by a teacher and they're saying, and you sort of had to roll your eyes, and my face sort of didn't know how to do that anymore. I ended up putting a really strange face. I was really embarrassed. Liv was looking at me like super confused. And I saw Miguel, like all I wanted was like, you know, they've got cameras on Matt, they've got cameras on Paddy, no one's gonna see that I'm doing this bad acting, and then Miguel walked down about 35 supporting artists to go like, Fabian, what's up with your face, dude? And I was like, I don't know what that was, but I'm really sorry. And then he proceeded to give Liv Cook the most complicated note I've ever heard. It was like, you look at Paddy and feel this, and then you look at uh, Kristen and you feel this, and then you look at your father and feel this. And I remember being like, haha, good luck, Liv. And then literally action happened, and she was like, look, look, look. And I just remember being like, wow, that's kind of what, having done it at such a high level for such a long period of time is like. What would you have me do? There is a debt to be paid. Yeah, so this is the scene after kids have had this fight and Eamon has lost his eye. This was the th I think this was our first week at least in studio, so it was our second week of filming. And I just remember being genuinely in awe of how good everyone was in this scene. It was like insane. Like I couldn't believe how good Viser Paddy was as Viserys and how amazing Liv and Emma were in their bit and then how E-Best was with the kids. 
And like, I don't know, I just, I really remember feeling at that point, I felt very lucky that I got to be there and see it. And I was on a, and I was on a podium. Reese Evans was behind this chair and he sort of like, he had made this chair and he would sort of poke his head like out of the chair at moments in the scene where he felt it was relevant. He had this line, which was release the blade, Alison, which at one point he came up behind me and screamed it in my ear. And it became like, I'll ne I remember th talking about Release the Blade Alice and, and Reese and I sending each other voice notes of him screaming Release the Blade Alice and for the entirety of the shoot, yeah. I should have one of her sun's eyes in return. Grab it. Honestly, the makeup, the job that the makeup team did to make Leo look like that, I find but it's, I don't know, I've never, and I was talking, a friend of mine was saying yesterday, he called me, he said he'd just watched episode seven and said that the fight with the kids, he said he'd never seen a kid's fight like that ever in a, in a TV show and he thought that was amazing. My dear wife. He is your son, Sarah. Your blood. Do not allow your temper to guide your judgment. If the king will not seek justice, the queen will. Sir Kristen, bring me the eye of Lucerus Velarium. Mother! Alison. He can choose which eye to keep a privilege. He did not grow up, my son. You will do no such thing. Stay your hand. No, you are sworn to me! Can I ask you a question? When, have you seen this episode? Okay, when she says, Sir Kristen, bring me the eye of Lucerus Valarian, in your head, I say I'm your protector, my queen. Do you think I'm gonna go and do it? You yeah, do. I didn't. Then. So this scene's been, like, it's so interesting because uh, I've heard, like, so many different people tell me what they thought happened in this scene and how they thought the scene was. I know what I like thought at that moment, but I'm not going to say what I that was because I think it's really interesting that so much, some people thought I was going to go and take the eye out. Some people said I said, no, I'm not going to do that. Some You thought I'd been stabbed. You thought I was going to do it. There you go. Live to the gods. <laughs> As your protector, my queen. Alison, this matter is finished. Do you understand? Anyone whose tongue dares to question the birth of Princess Rhaenyra's sons should have it removed. Thank you, Father. Release the blade, Alison. That was the line. That's what he's saying, release the blade, Alison. Which I can tell you now, every time that he was about to say that line, Miguel would be like, cut, guys, perfect. So we're going to turn that around now. And Reese would be like... So he got so frustrated that he hadn't said it. And when he finally got to say it, and I couldn't stop laughing about it, he came up behind me and he literally screamed, release the blade! And I was like behind him trying to kind of stay in the scene. Anyway, it really makes me laugh that they picked this really understated version of it because he gave them a few alternative options. Okay, so this next scene is Kristen Cole training uh, an older Eamon. <laughs> I haven't actually seen this, sorry. I've not seen this fight. Whoa, okay. Here we go, I wonder how it looks.
Oh man, you and Mitchell is just the coolest dude ever. He, he, this was, I guess, one of our first days filming together. I think that he's going to be such a massive hit amongst the fans. He's got one of the most incredible faces. He's like super gentle, incredibly thoughtful, kind, interesting actor. It's just a blast to work with him. And he's, he's an amazing fight, like stage combat fighter. So it was really great because I'd by that point, I'd worked with the Morning Star a fair bit, so I felt quite comfortable. And he sort of stepped in. And obviously, you know, the show's so much set up that Kristen Cole is this, you know, one of the great fighters. And sort of Ewan to come forward and be so uh, game to step into this. And like, the, I don't know, he's really talented. Well done, my prince. You win in Tony's in no time. I don't give a shit about tawnies. Nephews? Have you come to train? Oh, no, man, Ewan, I just can't like... Every time I went into ADR and saw Ewan's face, I'd like sneak a picture and send it to him and be like, dude, do you know how rock and roll you look in this shot, dude? That was probably the hardest fight scene to land them all. Maybe even harder than my fight with Damon. And... It was Gita, who's one of our um, brilliant directors, directed that episode. And, you know, they're really tricky, those fight scenes, because you sort of want to keep the energy um, as best you can throughout the fight. They wanted really to do it, you know, as much of keep like a kind of steady shot on as possible rather than cutting, going and going. And we almost, we did the whole fight, like almost every time we would do it all the way through. Yeah, it was, it was like, it was a dip, it was a tiring day, but it was a load of fun. And those fight days are always great because you have all this adrenaline from from doing them and there's at the side of this there's a fight between the twins who are going to come through luke and elliot who are like great they're playing the cargill twins i'm incredibly excited for them to for people to see them as well because they're i think they're going to be a really welcome addition to the show um yeah thank you very much for watching i'm millie alcock uh this has been my freeze frames for british esquire <laughs>